Welcome back. This is still Tea Time on Plus TV Africa. As the youth of Nigeria are on the streets demanding better poli policing and economy, there is an ongoing conversation regarding the support from the older generation and their reactions. Some are of the opinion that our parents have failed and that the millennials and the Gen Zs are determined to take this country back from um, years of misappropriation and bad leadership. Now joining to speak for the generation after Nigeria's independence and possibly the generation before is a British trained Nigerian documentary photographer, cultural anthropologist, and author. He is the author of 14 books about Nigeria, including River State, Our Proud Heritage, Tour Nigeria, Lagos State Portraits, and his recent publication, Owe Yoruba 2.0. He has archived over 4 million images about Nigeria and is a passionate um, he's very passionate about history and um, preserving the history of Nigeria. He has also toured the 36 states of Nigeria and visited the 774 local governments we have in Nigeria. And that's the one and only Dayo Adedayo. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, that's you are nice here to make job. a case. So, so you, are, you are not to laugh at all. <laughs> at all. No, 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 no I, I, I have to laugh like uh, someone laughed some few days ago. So don't worry. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's not mention the someone yeah, yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but but um, did someone laugh at someone? Oh, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. But <laughs> do you think it's fair for this generation to blame the previous generation? Um, or based on what is happening now, do you think it's fair? Um, thank you for having me on your show. And yeah. I'm really happy. I see all of you as my children. Mm -hmm. right. My first child is 29, so you guys are not far away from that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, is it fair? You have to go back into history to know what is going on. Mm. If you, the generation of the current president, President Mohamed Buhari, mm. failed this country. But we have to go back into history. We have the generation of the Awolos, mm. starting with uh, the first nationalist, Abad Macaulay. Mm. These guys were in their 30s. And Amadou Bello became the premier of Northern Region mm. at the age of 48. Mm. Awolo became the premier at the age of 45. Sir Michael Okwara became the premier of Eastern Region at the age of 39. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the median age of these guys, they are the same people we call youths mm -hmm. in Nigeria today. Mm -hmm. So what happened? This guy started very, very well. And we keep referring to them up to tomorrow. Then the generation of the current president took over in 1966, mm. and everything started going down south. Their generation, if you are 70 and above in Nigeria today, you missed Nigeria help. Mm -hmm. Then they gave back to us. Mm. I'm 56. They gave back to us, and we struggle through I would say my generation, or if you're 50 and above, enjoyed the last of Nigeria. Mm. Because I was in Form 3 when UPN came in 1979. Sorry, what's UPN? United Party of Nigeria. That is the Awo Lower Party. Oh, right. Okay. right. When they came in 79. <clears throat> and I remember in October, they refunded our school fees, mm -hmm. which was 90 Naira. In secondary mm. school, boarding. 19 Naira for body in 1979. So I know you say a lot of my dad in you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that was refunded to us. Hmm. So I would say if you're 50 and above, you enjoy the bit of Nigeria. Hmm. Our generation hmm. gave back to the democracy that you guys can go on the street today and hmm. shut everywhere down. Hmm. In our time, there was nothing like hmm. social media where everything is real time. And Lots papers. of people lost their lives for this democracy you are talking about. If you look at the median age of the people protesting today, it's about 25, mm. highest 30. Mm. So this democracy started in 1999, 20, 21 years. 
So probably the oldest among them will be nine or eight years, still in primary school. Mm. So you don't even have a clue of what we went through to bring back this democracy. So in every generation, there will always be something. I doff my heart for what they're doing at the moment because for the first time, uh, it is not about government policy. You know, NSAS is just NSAS, but it goes beyond NSAS. Mm. I'll be very happy if your generation can now bring in good governance. Mm. Mm. I've been petrified about my retirement. Right. Will I still be working when I'm retired? Right. What will my retirement be? My children might not meet some of their cousins mm. because. What is happening in Nigeria now is worse than appetite in South Africa. Sure. Why? You just don't mix. When I was in school, I went to a village school in Ogun State, Ijebufe, to be precise. Village, village. You can go and see what Ijebufe looks like today. We have children of major general who are my classmates, my juniors. We have children of ambassadors, federal ambassadors in foreign countries. We have children of permanent secretaries, directors mm. at federal level. Right. Can you have children in public schools of those guys today? No. Mm. The answer is no. And guess what the Buhari generation did again? They caused a senseless war. Because you need to go back into history mm. for you to know what is going on. Sure. Their generation fought a senseless war between 1967 mm. and 1970. They were just aged then. Mm -hmm. And they believe they can change the world. Mm -hmm. But they do not add a dime to good governance in Nigeria. And that is what we're seeing today. Mm. By the time the regional government were there, Chief of Afemi Aola, the premier in Western State, opened the first television station in Africa. Mm -hmm. So Western region had television station before France, mm. before Northern Ireland, mm. before South Africa. Mm. They had the first stadium. Liberty Stadium in Ibadan. And there wasn't this kind of money then. Mm. There was no money. And to cap it on, not just in, on infrastructure, the best policy he gave us then was education. Mm. And that education was only primary school, mm. not secondary. Primary school was free. If you have to look back now, right, and I mean, it's easy for me to say at what point did this... Did we start getting it wrong? But I don't want to use points. I would say, what event can you remember that, would, that you would say that's the point where we well, began we to get it left. wrong? 1966. Mm. January 15th. The January 15th, 1966 coup messed this country up. The soldiers were trained. They were brilliant. They too were brilliant in their own little way. Mm -hmm. Because I just could not imagine being joining the army. Mm. You know, they want to give their life to their country. But they were not trained to be in government. If they have left the regions as they were then, the three regions, to be functioning. I mean, look at Nigeria today. Aulawa built University of Ife. No university in the whole of Nigeria can beat University of Ife. Right. It was built by the Western region, not federal government. Too. Mm -hmm. Then, Azikwe said no. He has to. Azikwe was more nationalistic in attitude. Right. You know, he built Usuka and named it the University of Nigeria. All right. Sir. I would like to say thank you to you and um, the older generation for all you've done and, you know, being a part of um, fighting for us, for us to be able to proceed with this right now. But it feels like the more you doff your hat for our generation, the more you hang your booth. Because a lot of you are beginning to say that, oh, I saw a, a post on Charlie Boy recently when somebody tweeted at him and say, why are you not protesting? And he responded saying, I am tired. I've been protesting for over 40 years. But now that we have woken up and we're out there, what is wrong with the older generation still fighting our battle? Because this is what you have been fighting for. And I'm sure you're all proud of what we're doing right now. So why are you not still joining us? We got any little way you can, apart from saying we're proud of you guys. Mm. We uh, still need you. The reason why we can't join you, uh, if any of us should join, it will turn political. Mm. And two things you don't discuss with people, or three things actually. One is religion. The second is politics. And the third thing is a person in love, either a man or a woman. Whatever you tell them, they will, not, they will not listen to you. So we don't want to join because immediately any of us joined, it will not be, oh, 
because it's this, it's that. I don't want to mention any political party. Not just that. In 1984, I remember, yeah, it was in 1984 on the Hard Talk in London, BBC. Well, Isho Inka said my generation was a mm. failed generation. Mm. Well, Isho Inka has been protesting all his life. Do you still expect uh, someone going to be 90 mm. to now start your battle? You know, these guys, they've all collected their boarding passes. Mm. They are the boarding gates. Mm. They can leave anytime. You are not <laughs> even traveling anywhere. You've not bought your ticket, nothing. Mm. You know? So whatever you make out of this, the only appeal I will give now is you started NSAS. And God bless uh, Governor Sanwolu. All the five things you gave to him, he went to Abuja and told the governor. And out of the government volition of Lagos State, I mean, if you look at the country mm. entirely, you guys need to go into history because there are things I cannot see on national telly, right? Mm. right? Because of national answer. security, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? But this, you have to note. Mm. Let it be on record. Right. Why was Nigeria amalgamated? Do you know, any of you? Um, you can enlighten us. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. I mean, I can start sharing my own. I, I could share ahead. some points, okay. but I would like no, no, to. Nigeria be was not amalgamated because of politics. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nigeria was amalgamated agam <laughs> agam yes. because the northern region was running a deficit budget, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the southern protectorate were running a surplus budget. Mm. So money was being sent from England to maintain the northern region. And that hasn't changed till today. The money is not being you can, done differences. You, you can end, you've, you've gotten what you want in handing SARS. Mm. I think this should be periodical, mm. right? After this, you, can, you guys can come back again and say, oh, we want to restructure. Okay. Let's go back to the region. Mm. Just, just to, you mentioned something that gave me shivers a bit when you said in your time, the, or the last protest, the problem was that they, they didn't replace it with good governance and that you warned that we shouldn't just stop at SARS and you know, proceed to ending, um, um, making sure that we have good governance. I think a lot of us are, are very desperate for, in this type of period because we put so much on the line. A lot of people have died, friends, uncles, and things, and we don't want this to be a waste. But at the, at the same time, we're really young and uneducated for the most part. We just know that this is wrong. Not a lot of people are that aware or Best grounded thing. in the politics and the structure or the history. And I'm one of them. I'm not even going to lie. I know nothing about the history. But I wanted you to, I want you to please shed more light on what would the, be those indications of good governance and how we can get that to happen. Right now, we do have people, like we were discussing earlier in the show, frontliners who help you know, put those things into... In, um, into structure, or make it a poster. Even the five for five, they helped us to ward our feelings together properly. Um, so um, obviously, they, they would be watching as well. How can we put those those same energies into making sure that we have govern good governance, like you've mentioned? Okay, uh, the easiest way to that is okay. You've done this. At the moment, we have a constitutional authority. We are running a democracy, and we've only got three years before the expiration of this administration. Mm -hmm. You guys are nearly 70% of the population. Mm. For me, that is massive. Mm. And guess what? We are scared of what you guys are doing now. Mm. You can't see any politician as that today that is not scared because nobody knows where this is going to happen. Okay, do you, think, do you think that you or the politicians or the older generation are scared of those movements presently or you believe in what we are doing presently or you can't, like you said earlier, you said the older generation can join because it will become political. Do you think it's because we are less corrupt and our hands are not dirty yet? But the older generation have collected Ghana's gold, they've collected bribe, they've been influenced by politicians in no, the past. No, no, Could no, that no. be the reason why no, they're no. more scared of us? No, 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 no. That's not the reason. And the Ghana must go. They've collected. They've used it in training you guys. Mm. Mm. I'm, I'm looking at you guys. You didn't go to public schools, right? So the, because when you say but corruption, what is wrong is wrong. What is wrong is wrong. But what I'm trying to say is, is your life. You've not even started living life. You guys are in another 10, 15, 20 years time. It's going to be a different ball game to you guys. Mm. So what the Awolowos did to get independence is what you guys should do. But there is a caveat when I said but. You came out to hand SARS. Mm. 
the government has said we are handing SARS. Mm. You get five points agendas, mm. they've agreed to the five mm. points agenda. So what you guys should do now is to go back. Retreat. And if you want to come back for good governance in another time, because one, Lagos owes seventy five percent of the economy. Mm. Mm. Sure. And if you should kill the golden goose, yeah, that gives you the golden egg. Hmm. Nigeria is in trouble. Okay. And there is a proverb, let me finish my thought, in Yoruba that says, Ibere Jalamo, hmm. hmm. which translates to, you only know, you know the, the beginning, beginning of a fight. You don't know where it is okay. going to end. We don't want to end up like Libya, right. Syria, or Iraq. Mm -hmm. Three years is a long time for you guys. So if you want to have a political party, nobody stops you from having a political party. Right. And you can never rig election. People always say they rig election. No, you only rig where you are popular. Mm. Mm. If you are not popular, there is no way you can rig an election. I was already in the West in 1983. I mean, so, yeah, in 1983, in Ondo State, when they rig MPA, National Party of Nigeria, rigged themselves in against the Unity Party of Nigeria, UPN. Houses were burnt, people were killed. Why? Because you, MPN wasn't popular in Ondo State. Mm. So if you guys should form a party today and say this is what you want, and you've won, you've won. Okay. The only thing is after four years, if you are not good, they'll vote you out. Mm. Okay. Um, my question is a follow-up to the question he asked previously, where he was saying what your generation can do, and he said they can't join at the moment. Now, beyond just saying, well done, we like what you're doing, do this and do that, how else can they join to help us push this agenda forward. How else? Mm -hmm. Money hands are at home. Your mm. generation hasn't got the money. No, so the funding, where is the funding coming from? It's been crowdfunded. crowdfunded. Uh, from, from you two guys. No. We can say it on here. We can say it there too and tell us how much are you donating to our cause, sir. Uh, <laughs> 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 what I've donated to your cause <laughs> is for you to see a beautiful country. This is the most beautiful country in the world. Mm. Forget about all the political challenges we are having, all the insecurity challenges. Uh -huh. This Nigeria is a gold mine to be tapped into. 200 million people or over mm -hmm. 200 million people. You guys, we are handing over a country to you guys that you'll be wondering, oh, dad, mom, why did you guys not make the opportunity? Mm -hmm. They were there in your time, mm -hmm. you know? So for me, what I want you guys to see or what I want you guys to do after Hensens is good governance. Right. One, someone from Zamfara should not score two mm. to get into Unity School. Mm. Why someone from Anambra will have to score 139 mm. to get into yeah. the same school? And this same person will come out to join the police, and this person from Zamfara who scored two will now be the IG mm. over the person that scored 139. In, a, in Anambra, not just that alone, that person will join the civil service mm. and be the PAMSEC over the person that's called 139. That person will join the military or join the intelligence agencies. And that is what is killing this country. Hey. And that is what I'm seeing on this year protest. Mm. There is no divide line to say, oh, I'm Igbo, I'm Aousa, I'm beautiful. Yoruba, mm. which is very, very good. And that is where the politicians are scared. Mm. Is this where you begin to talk about restructuring? Is that something you... That should be the next point. Okay. But they need to end this protest. All right. Because Tomba Nyoto, Onilu Asisimi, Aito, Onilu Ajefoti. So when they tell you to stop mm. and you don't stop, mm. anything else can happen after that. All right, um, sir, one thing I would also like to ask is that um, from this whole protest, what do you think um, is the future of the Nigerian youth, considering the fact that we are now away, considering the fact that we now know these things, and we are still of the state of mind that we have cabals? Do you think that some people will be willing to step down and give us a chance now that we know that we are woke? Nobody give power on their plate. Mm -hmm. You have to grab it. That's the way power works. And I said earlier on, the politicians are scared. So what you guys need to do, in terms of education, you might not as be as bright as us. Yeah. But in terms of creativity, you are a million years ahead of us. 
and your creativity is what is working for you now. I will still say again that you end this as whoever originated it or the group that originated it should go back on the drawing board. If you don't want this current politicians to be your head in another three years, mm. you need to come together right. and do something for yourself. If you still want them to be, then you vote for the right person. Yeah, well, that's my next question. Um, the, do you think that it's also a problem that we don't have a face to this protest? We don't have anyone leading us that we can say, this is a person you can speak to on that our is, That is to you. Mm. You don't know. Those that knows, knows. <laughs> Isn't that a problem in itself? There is no problem. And it, it, it's part of the major challenges we have in Nigeria. Abroad, Europe or North America, a first-class graduate would have been recruited into the civil service and intelligence agency. Mm -hmm. And most especially, when you are first class in sciences or maths, forget it. You are destined for the intelligence agency. Right. But what do we have in Nigeria? Who are the people going to civil service? Mm -hmm. Who are the people working for government? Mm -hmm. I won't say more than that. If I can, okay, go if on, I, go if on. I'm pushing just a, another, another question really quick, because we're running out of time, I know. Um, there is, there is the hint that we need to create our own party. And I think you've mentioned that even a bit before. And we have that right now, especially with the bill of, you know, young people being able to run now. Do you think that the next three years, should, that should be something that we set in place? Or should we just be more specific in who we vote for with the pool of existing politicians? I still let the same people we lost. The cake and the knife is in your hand. Uh. Whichever way you want to cut it. Uh, you cut it. You have the numbers. Democracy is the majority. Uh, and thank God in Nigeria, a simple majority. There is nothing like the collegiate uh, things yeah, that I have in America. America. <laughs> so just a simple majority. With what you guys are doing now, what you then need to do, because I could see a dividing line in the country. Uh, All these things is happening majorly in the South. Uh, the Northerners are quiet about it. So if you want to rule Nigeria, you have to have handshake across the Niger. Mm. But if you don't want Nigeria to be as it is today, because to me, I prefer Nigeria, but Nigeria should be restructured. Why? I cannot be in the same office with someone that scored two. Mm. Why someone from Ogun State will have to score 130? Mm. It, it just doesn't, life is not like that. Mm. If rain is going to beat everybody, Rain will beat everybody. It will not mm -hmm. pre-select to say, oh, because you are good, you are bad. That is why rain is not falling mm -hmm. on you. Mm -hmm. you know? So that is what you guys should ham on. But this end sense should hand and say, thank you, government. We came out for something. Yeah, We've yeah, succeeded. Yeah. Then maybe in another two months, three months, it's another issue. Mm -hmm. Or you just form a political party. Because if you say end sense, and you want to bring up another issue, shifting the goalposts, it's not going to work for you. Mm -hmm. Yes, they've, they've disbanded the group. You say, okay, no more SARS. We're okay. coming up with another thing. You Quick, know, quickly. and that's just it. But you guys, the world is your oyster. Quickly, quickly, I'd just like to chip in because um, you've mentioned a lot about the northern region and, um, um, enjoying certain benefits that the east, the south, the west, and north. Now, do you, how do you think that we can breach that gap that your generation and the generations of your fathers were not able to breach? We're still coming back to the same thing, where mm. we all started from, mm. is this Ensign's project. Mm. <laughs> the cake and the knife is in your hand. So we have to... You have to form a political party, because you can't say revolution, revolution now With without With a face. face. But am I correct that the Northerners are enjoying certain benefit that the East, the West, the South are not? I, I, I won't generalize, but they have a certain advantage over us. Why? Because they have the population. Mm -hmm. Guess what? If they are to go to the National Assembly today, the South will lose that. Mm -hmm. Because they have more representatives up mm -hmm. north than the South. Mm -hmm. Between Kano and Jigawa, they have two states. They have more representation than the East. Nearly more representation than the East. The whole of South is five states. And guess what? The Northwest have seven states. The South is just have five, mm. the least of all the regions in the country. So what are we talking about? Yeah. So if you want to restructure, the cake and the knife is in your hand. But you can't say hence SARS. SARS has ended. 
No, okay, so no you don't want to shift the goalposts. Yeah. No, it I doesn't work like that. Okay. Thank you for drinking tea. This has been, um, should I say, a lightning conversation. Yeah, thank you for been. being here. And thank you for watching. Do join the conversation on social media with the hashtag Tea Time or tweet at us at Plus TV Africa. Also send in your opinions via WhatsApp to 090-6000-5719. Remember, you can catch up on this episode and all our exclusive content by subscribing to our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also, watch Tea Time on IOT TV and in London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Olu okay? And of course, our guest, Mr. Dayo Adedayo. Thank you for being here. And thank you for watching. My name remains Elsie Godwin. Please do stay safe.